In today's tutorial, we're going to work on the hands full crochet mittens. The title of this video is the size that we're going to be working on today. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on this beautiful pattern. This is called the Hands Full Crochet Mittens. It comes in three sizes and in the starting of today's video I'm just going to do a quick uh, pattern review and then we're going to jump to the size that's indicated in the video title. So all of the intros are going to be the same for all three sizes because we have to go and look at everything that is the same with each one of the sizes but then once we actually do the stitch work we're going to then look at each individual size and work our way throughout this pattern. So let's do a quick pattern review. So in today's pattern it comes in many different sizes. We have all the way from 2 to 4, 8 to 10 and then adult and it's a mathematical calculation based on the growth of your hands. So you're going to notice that there's colors. So we have like a fuchsia, yellow and a green here. So anytime there's a decision to be made we can see that in the pattern here which I'll explain. So one ball of Karen, one pounder can make eight pairs of mittens for the young or the smallest size 2 to 4 can make 6 pairs of mittens for the next size up 8 to 10 years old and it can make 4 pairs of mittens for the adult size just like this. So that's kind of a neat thing. So you can Most of the new patterns by Yarnspirations.com has a color code and you can see two, uh, 2 to 4, 8 to 10 and adult and you see that this is the size. So all of the instructions are provided with that. So whenever you see a bracket like this, so if you're working on for example, let's say we're going to do the 8 to 10 years, we're going to say with the main color, MC is main color and you can see that in the description, is that you have to chain 12. Okay, do you see that? So every time you're going to make a decision. So what I would do if I were you and you or me, every time a decision needs to be made I would go through the pattern in advance and go and look at it. So anytime there's a, a dimension, so for example it says you need to keep working until it's 5 inches based on that size and again you're looking for the color codes. So when there's no color codes in, in a set of instructions just like you see here, you just follow it as it says. So some of the instructions when we see these in other patterns is that there is no color code because because that's just what it means. So let's uh, look up here real quick and it says work the number of single crochets evenly around. So for the 8 to 10 years it's 22 and then you just keep on going. So round number 2 here there is no uh, color coding at all. So this is the same instruction for all of the sizes and then it says repeat the second round and then you see 1, 1 or 2. Again look at the color code for you to be able to do that. So this is a really neat pattern and it's really not hard to do and I made a note that the tails are on the left. So let me tell you a little bit about that because this is about understanding where to stop when you're doing the cuff area. So here's the smallest size cuff that we have and this is for the 2 to 4 years of size and I had to work in advance to get this done. So you'll see where this is here. See this tail? You want to finish and you're opposite to it just like this. Okay? So that when you go to start the next round or the next set of instructions it will appear like this. Okay? So you're gonna start on the right side here and the tail is over here right on this side. So you just want to pay attention to that and what I would do if you were me and I were you, I would get two balls of Karen, one pounder and do the cuffs at the same time without fastening this off and then just do them so that the fact is is that you can lay this cuff over top of another cuff and get them done. So I would really uh, be interested in doing that. So here is the size that we have uh, for the, the 2 to 4 years and what's going to happen with this cuff is that we're going to turn it in order to make it. So if you lay the cuffs on top of each other like I did here you will be guaranteed that your cuffs will be the same size. Again that's a personal choice that's up to you. So just out of interest I have to work ahead of time when I do a tutorial. So I did all the cuffs in advance and I'll show you how to do the cuffs. They're really quite easy. So this is the 2 to 4 euros of size and this is the 8 to 10 and this is the adult. So by the time you flip it up and fold it you can see what the wrist size is for the difference. So you can see when you fold these that they're much different than each other when you go to do it. So this is how I did it and it was just it made it a lot easier. So if I was to do a second pair I would actually do the cuff again with another ball of yarn and then I would lay it over top make sure that they match completely so that you are guaranteed that the cuff is the same size. Again that's completely up to you. So without further ado you need a 4.5 millimeter US size 11 or sorry US size 7 and what we're going to be doing today is that we're going to be working on the pattern that's indicated in the video tutorial today. So let's move on. 
So let's begin today's tutorial. We're going to work on the cuff and this is going to be two to four years of age and you're going to need a ball of Karen one pounder for so this. So here's an example of the cuff and this is what we're going to end up with and you can see that it has ridging just like so. It's a really quite an easy cuff to be able to do and you're working on the back loops uh, when you're going to do this to create that and because you're doing that it's going to create a flex so that when you fo uh, fold it and put it together it's going to be like um, elastic around somebody's wrist. Now these gloves are long enough so I can show you the the kid size version here. The gloves are long enough that this can travel up the arm. There's nothing worse than getting ice and snow on your wrists uh, especially here. Um, I remember that being very painful as a kid on um, having gloves that were not long enough. So these will be long enough to travel uh, a nice distance up the arm to prevent that snow hitting and getting down the uh, the point of the mittens. So let's uh, begin and let's grab a yarn and let's go. For the two to four years of age just leave an extra long tail here that you can use a darning needle to hide in those loose ends at the end and create a slip knot using your four and a half millimeter size seven crochet hook today. So we're going to just create a slip knot and that does not count as one. So what we want to do on this particular one is that we need to chain ten. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10 and you're thinking gee that's really long. Don't worry about it. Once you start working on this it'll compress down and get shorter. So let's move along to the first row. So the first row we're gonna go second chain from the hook. So count back. So one and two. Turn it over. Get the back loop only of that chain and I want you to single crochet and I want you to single crochet all the way down the chain. So this is the only one that you're really not worrying about doing a back loop on. It's the very first one because you're already kind of working the back loop of that chain anyway. So you're gonna work all the way down and it's gonna be really quite uh, fun. So what you need to do is that you need to get a tape measure because you can only uh, do this so long and then it's gonna be at the right um, length that you want to get. So in this case it only has to be four and a half inches long by the time you get all the way done. So let's just pull up the other example here. So here is the smallest size. So what I need to do is work myself up to only four and a half inches just like you see here and I have to finish off so that this is on this side up here and the tail is down over here. So let's continue. You turn your work. So you're gonna chain up one first and then going into the back loop. If you're new to crochet there's two strands. Going into both of them is a stitch. Going into the strand closest to you is the front loop and going into the strand furthest away from you is the back loop. So go into the back loop and single crochet and you're gonna do that all the way down your work. Okay? So you're working in the back loops back and forth, back and forth till you get four and a half inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you just one more time how to turn and then I'm gonna leave the rest for you and you're gonna get to your four and a half inches and then you're gonna join me there. Okay, so you go right to the end. So if you're counting your stitches there should only be nine going all the way across. So just double check once in a while. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. If you get more than nine then you know something's wrong. So to turn your work again chain up one back loop only. Okay, so back loop and single crochet all the way. So please do this and meet me back here when your work is four and a half inches long and I will see you here and we'll carry on and learning how to do the mitt. So again I would probably do both cuffs at the same, same time if you have opportunity to do so. It just will save you time even if you want to do different colors of balls at the same time just to make sure that your cuffs are the same. So just carry on going all the way down and you'll see that the ribbing is happening right before your eyes. So let's begin the eight to ten years of age and we're gonna create a slip knot to begin and insert our hook. A four and a half millimeter size seven crochet hook today. You're going to chain a total of twelve. So let's do that. So just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and twelve and you're thinking wow that's really long. The reality is is that once you start working on it it's gonna compress. So let's carry on to row number one. You're gonna go to second chain from the hook. So count back. So one and two. Turn it over. Get the back hump only of that chain and I want you to single crochet down the chain. Once you turn it over the, the back loops will stay all turned up. Do you see them? It's like a spine of a, recti a reptile that I always like to tell people and you're just gonna single crochet yourself all the way back. So there's gonna be a total on this one here of eleven stitches going across. 
your cuffs at all times. So once in a while I would double check and just count to make sure that you don't add or subtract any so that your cuff stays a perfect rectangle as you work your way. So once you get beyond here you're gonna notice that the chain is gonna compress down and make it shorter and which is exactly what you're looking for. So just going right to the end and you wanna make sure that you are starting off properly. Nothing's worse than making a pair of gloves and then you real or a pair of mittens and you realize that the cuffs are different from each other. So let's count. So we're gonna do one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So what you're gonna do is that we're gonna create a back loop only. So if you're new to crochet, there's two strands. So let me just pull this out. There's two strands. Do you see that? So the front one when you're facing it is going to be the front loop just like this. The loop that's on the other side is the back loop but together they're, they're named as a stitch. So you wanna work in the back loops only. So as you turn you're gonna chain up one and you're gonna dive right into the back loop only and this is gonna create that rib that you can see within the cuffs and you're gonna single crochet yourself in the back loop only all the way down. So every row is gonna be the exact identical. You're just gonna work in the back loops and this is gonna create that ridging that you see the ribbing effect in the cuffs very easy. This was what makes the cuffs elastic when you go to work on it in the back loops like this. You see this in hats and other ideas where elasticity in crochet is required. So you just work in the back loops only. So once you get all the way to the, down to the other side, turn your work, chain one and again back loop only. So you're just gonna continue to go back and forth and so for this size here of the um, eight to ten years you need to get your cuffs a total of five inches long. So unlike the other cuffs they're a different length. This one is gonna be five inches long and let me just uh, get this row done and let me show you what a five inch looks like. Just carrying on and getting right to the end and turn my work and just hold. So here is what the other size will look like here. So what I want to do is that I want to build this up so that they're both five inches. So if you can work on two cuffs at the same time just do one and then do the other and then you just lay them on top of each other make sure they match. Therefore you'll have a perfect set of uh, mittens each and every time. So I'm gonna leave this with you now. Just go back and forth get your five inches and the next time we meet what we're gonna do is that we're gonna start working on the main part of the mittens. So let's begin working on the adult size mittens and we're gonna create a slip knot. I create an extra long tail so I can use that to uh, put a darning needle and get rid of it at the end to make it look hidden. So I want to begin and you're going to chain a total of 14 this time. So you're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13 and 14 and you're thinking wow that's a long chain. It's going to compress. Don't you worry about it. So you're gonna go second chain from the hook. So just count back. So one and two. Turn it over. Get the back loop only of the chain and you'll have a nice perfect edge then and you're gonna single crochet yourself all the way down the chain. So you're going to notice that the cuffs have a ribbing effect and that's going to be achieved once we get beyond this row and all we just need to do is do the same thing back and forth until we get to a certain measurement. So for the adult size that we want to get is that we need to get the length of the cuff to be seven inches long because that's what it's gonna take in order to wrap around your wrist as an adult if you are an adult watching today's tutorial. So seven inches is what we have and it will not fit completely because it will have a slight stretch to it which is what you want. You'll notice that the cuffs are actually very long and in the photograph they are actually folded up for photographic reasons but the reality is, is that they're really long so it slides under your coat perfectly. So you're just gonna do a single crochet right to the end. So what you're gonna do is that if you're new to crochet you're gonna play with the back loops only. So you'll see that there's two sets of uh, strands here. The one that's furthest away from you, okay, is a back loop and the one that's closest to you is the front loop. So if you were to go into one strand only, this is the front loop here and if you went into the one that's furthest away from you, that's a back loop. So in order to achieve the ribbing, we're going to do back loops. So when you turn your work, you're gonna chain up one and you're gonna go into the back loop only. So just turn it and you're diving into the back. So this is creating the ribbing effect and all you're just gonna do is that you're gonna work your way down this row using back loops only and you're just gonna turn your work and do back loops only and it's gonna create the beautiful ribbing that you see. 
So it's really not a hard thing to do. Um, it's just a matter of repetition in order to get it to the size that you need to go. So I'll get to the end and then I'll show you to review again how to turn and begin again. And this is what's creating that beautiful look on your particular project. Okay, so you're going right to the end. So in the, it's a, in this end, once in a while, you're gonna wanna count these stitches. So there should be a total of 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So you chain 14 to begin and the reason why there's 13 because you went second chain from the hook. So when you go to turn your work, you're gonna chain up one and again diving into the back loop and you're just gonna work your way across. This is a really kind of a quick process, single crocheting. These cups are actually really quick. Uh, I did it quick for myself. If you're experienced to crochet, then you'll be experienced and comfortable with doing this. So let me just put this down. So you need to get a total of seven inches uh, long and then what you want to do is that I have another cuff here that is seven inches just like this. So I wanna build this up. So what I would do if I were you is that I would do the cuffs at the same time. So grab another ball of yarn and do the cuffs at the same time and once you get one done and you're happy with it, see where the straggler is? This is where you should be, okay, when you go to finish. Okay, see the, the tail? And you're just gonna take the other one and lay it up over top just like this and make sure that it goes up. So if you're off by any, uh, like even at least one, then you can fix it at the time instead of doing one whole uh, mitten and realizing that your cuffs are actually a different size. The next uh, part of this tutorial anyway, we're gonna get it right back to the size. But you know what, why not try to find tips in order to get it right the first time. So let's move along and let's begin the next part. So now I've just finished the size here, two to four years of age and all I wanna do now is that I have the length that I needed which was a total of four and a half inches and now see where this tail is? This is where I wanna finish when I go to do this part of the process. So what we're gonna do now is that we're going to um, just fold this up. So let's just fold up like this and we're going to then join the two seams together. So just grabbing your yarn so it's in the way so you can do it. So all you're just gonna do then is that you're going to work in the back loops only of this one here and slip stitch um, to the remaining loops on the foundation chain. So you're gonna go into the back loop here. Okay, you notice I never chained one first. So you go into this one here and you go into the remaining loops. So there's gonna be two loops on the foundation chain. You're gonna yarn over and pull through both of, uh, pull through everything just like there and that just joined it. So you go to the next one, back loop only and then go into the remaining loops of the, the, the foundation that you started with and just slip stitch this together. So back loop and bring it through. Okay, so you're joining it as you go here. You do not wanna fasten off your yarn at the end of this process. You wanna keep it going. That's why I was suggesting uh, putting in two balls of yarn in the very beginning but of course if you have to, you have to. So I'm just slip stitching across and this is creating the edging to look perfect for when you're going to uh, see a child wear these. So just slip across and the final ones right here. So because you got the perfect square going on is that you will uh, be in the right amount of stitches when you get it done. So this is what it will look like when you're done. Okay, so it looks like it matches, it's perfect. So let's begin and we're going to work our way up the wrist. So notice that I went like this and then I turned it. I just naturally did that because I know what's expected in today's pattern. So you're not gonna fasten off. So what your goal is, is that this is the wrist here. I know it's for a two to four years of age so it's gonna be pretty small. And what we need to do is get 18 single crochets around that. So even if your cuff is off by maybe one row, you can fake it at this level in order to do it. You will have a, 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 a cup that does look different though in size. So you're going to then chain up one and just working 18. So just strategically go around the top of this and count them out. So I'm gonna go one and I'm just gonna go in the side of it two and three and four and five and six. I'm gonna stop at nine. This is seven, eight and nine. So I'm reasoning I'm stopping at nine. Look at it. This is where I started. I want 18. So if nine takes me to the halfway point, I know I can get another nine in here. So if I'm at like this point here and I'm just only at nine, I realize I'm not gonna be able to finish. So this was nine. So I'm gonna carry on. I'm gonna go 10, 11, 
and 12, 13, this is 14, 15, 16, and it's just a matter of spacing it just evenly. This is 17 and 18 is right here. So now that I have 18 in here, I want to join it to the first single crochet that I had started with, which is right here. Right there. Okay, so now I have officially 18 going all the way around and now I can now move on and start working my way down the wrist. So let's begin. So for this dies, uh, what we're gonna do, the next two rounds are gonna be identical to each other. Let me show you. So you're gonna chain two, just like this, and it says in the pattern in the notes that chain two at the beginning doesn't count as a round, as a stitch. So it's just more of a builder. So coming into the same stitch right underneath, you're going to do a half double crochet. And you're gonna do a half double crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around. So there will be a total of 18 going all the way around by the time you're done. You're gonna notice that this will open up and it will not be as rigid as what you see here. So it won't be as small here because this has elastic properties to it because of the back loops. So continue around just half double crochet and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming up all the way around and I'm on my last stitch. So this one that leans over just like you see here, this is not a stitch that's leaning over as part of that one. So when I get that done, I want to slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet. Okay, so that concludes that round. So we're gonna do one more round of this one as per these instructions. It says repeat the second round and it had in fuchsia that it was one. So we're gonna do it again. So chain up two, doesn't count as anything, into the same stitch below for a half double crochet and do a half double crochet in each stitch going all the way around. I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming up all the way back around again. This is my last stitch here. Don't think that this one here is part of it. It's not and just join it to the top of the first half double crochet that you did. Okay, so it looks pretty even at this point. It looks really good and we're now gonna start doing some shaping and start opening it up for the thumb and let me show you um, what that looks like. So here's what we are right now when you look at the two sizes here, you see that it will start opening up and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna start making it wider so that we can get this to be perfect. So this is gonna open up on one side only, stay up on a narrow on the other side. And there is a slip stitching here and it's along the back seam of the mitt right here which is hard to tell. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna start shaping the thumb and we're gonna get it bigger and bigger and then eventually we'll leave a gap and then we'll do the thumb at the end. So let's begin doing the shaping of the thumb and we're going to chain two and we're gonna start off with half double crochet. Remember that doesn't count as anything, it's just a builder. Coming into the same stitch right underneath, you're going to half double crochet. So let me just stop here. So I've already just did one in our count. So it says one half double crochet in the next eight. So I just did one. So let's do the next seven which is half double crochets. So this is two and three, four, five, six, and seven. So what we want to do is I just wanna count. So we're gonna have to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I gotta do one more. This should be a total of eight to begin. So let me just recount again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So once you get your eight done, the next two are gonna be two half double crochets each. So put two into the same one for the first one and then the next one you're gonna put two into the next one. So this is gonna slowly open it up for you to make that room for the thumb and then you're going to then carry on and the rest of the stitches to the um, stitch or to the uh, beginning will all just be half double crochet. So just carrying on around so you just only have to count to a portion and then just half double crochet your back to the beginning. Okay, so that you get that done and then just join it to the top of the first half double crochet that you started with. Right there. Okay, so it's gonna be slightly open now and you will kind of see it. So this, um, this stitch marker area or the slip stitching will appear actually on the side and this side will start opening up on you. So let's uh, begin round number two. So round number two, we're gonna start off the same way. Just chain up two, does not count as anything and a half double crochet into the same one. So in the instructions it said uh, one half double crochet in each of the next eight. So you just did one, so that's one of eight. So let's just do the next uh, seven here. So this is two and three, four, five, 
6 and 7 and 8. Just want to double check. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So what we're gonna do on this particular round is that the next one is gonna have two half double crochets into the same one. So 1 and 2. Okay and then the next two are gonna be half double crochets by themselves. So 1 and 2. And then the next one is gonna be two half double crochets into the same one again. And then that's it for that round. So we're just gonna carry on with just half double crochets in each stitch going back to the very beginning. So the, really the reality is is that when you put two into the same one like we did we just um, um, we just opened it up a little bit more but we did it more incrementally depend, uh, based on where we put our stitches. Okay so there you go. So we're now back to the very beginning and you wanna slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet again to finish off that round. Okay, so there we go. And you can see it's opening up even more on this side. So let's begin at round number three. So let's begin round number three and we're gonna chain up two counts as nothing. It's just a builder and a half double crochet into the same one below. So it says half double crochet in each of the next eight. You've already done the first one right here. So the next seven. So let's start counting. So this is two, three, four, and five, six, seven, and eight, just like that. And so you just wanna count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now next one is gonna be two halves into the same one. And then the next four are going to be one sing or half double crochet each. So one, two, three, and four. And then the next one is gonna be two into the same one. So nice and easy, just like that. And then you're just gonna half double crochet yourself back to the beginning point again. So that was round number three. I have to flip the page in the pattern to see what's next. And you will see in the next part of the instructions on the same page one, it says addle only and because we're doing the two to four years, we're gonna ignore that because there is no instruction in our color for that. And it says size addle only anyway. So you just go right to the end and then just slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet. So this is what it looks like at the end of round number three. So you see it's really now come out just like that. So you can see the hand is really starting to to materialize. Let's uh, flip the page and let's uh, begin the next part of the instructions. In the next part of the instructions you'll need a stitch marker. It can just be a spare piece of yarn for you and we just need that just to indicate something for the future when we go to work on the thumb at a later time but we just need to put it aside right now and get it ready for this round. So it says all sizes which is all sizes and what we want to do is chain up two and half double crochet into the same one below. And it said there are one half double crochet in each of the next nine. So that you just did one there. That's, so that's already one. So let's do two and three and four and five, six, seven, eight and nine. So then it says in the instructions it says chain two. So chain two, one and two and it says to put a stitch marker in the chain two. So let's just put that in there. So just kind of just weave it in and it's just a temporary thing just so you can see it in the future. We're gonna be starting at this particular point in the future. So it just wants you to indicate it now. So it says um, skip the next six stitches. So on here we wanna skip the next six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and it says then to half double crochet into the next one. So make sure everything's nice and tight for you. Right there. Okay. And you're gonna continue to half double crochet yourself to the back to the beginning. So this round here was all about getting that thumb space right there. So you see that it's happening. And you're gonna come all the way to the very beginning to finish that round. And then just slip stitch it to the top of the chain two. So that concludes that round. So now you have a thumb space here 
and then we're going to be playing in other parts now. So in the next part of this uh, tutorial what's gonna happen is that we're gonna circle around the smaller area and ignore the thumb area for now. So let's move on along to the next round. So the next round is really quite easy and we're gonna chain up two. Okay and you're going to go into the same one. So it's gonna tell you to go a half double crochet into the next nine. So that includes that one that you just did. So one and I'm, I'm counting this on purpose but you really don't need to. So two and three and four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. See where I am? It took me right to the thumb. So what you wanna do here is that right into the chain, the two chain, you're not going into a space. Okay, so don't go into a space itself but in the next two chains you're going to put one half double crochet each into that. Okay, and make sure that you get two strands on top of the chain instead of just one and this will be nice and secure. So one and then here's where you place that marker, get that one in. Don't get any plies mixed in with you in with it. Just leave it out so it's there. L still leave it into position because you're gonna need it. And then carry on and come to the next stitch and you're just gonna half double crochet the remaining of the round. So this just is a builder to get you up to close in that thumb area um, at the top of the thumb and we are or like at the top of the like in between the indentation right here and you're just gonna half double crochet the remaining of the round and then we're gonna move on to the next one. So going all the way back around and just join it to the top of the first half double crochet. So the next part of the instructions is repeating exactly what we just did of just half double crochets around. You'll see that the thumb, if you put it from this perspective, the thumb hole is now there and we're just gonna continue to work up but we need a tape measure now because it says the next part is about uh, measuring to make sure that you get the right height from the cuff area to this area up here. Let's take a look. So in the next part of these instructions you're going to notice that it's gonna say repeat the next round till it's three and a half inches. So here's three and a half. Look I got one more round to do of just regular half double crochets before we start shaping in the top to create the rounded look at the top. So what I want to do at this point is that I want to go one more round and so you just have to just measure it. So all of the sizes have a different height. So uh, for example the adult size is all the way to nine. Okay so it's actually much bigger when you look at it from this perspective versus these child size just like this. So just do one more round of this and then we'll start shaping the top of your mitten. So I just measured and we're gonna chain two, doesn't count as anything, into the same one below and you're just gonna half double crochet yourself all the way around. Please do that and then just join with a slip stitch and then I'm gonna show you how to shape the top because we're almost done then the child size version just like this. So I'm all the way back around and I'm just going to join it to the top of the first half double crochet. So now we're gonna start shaping the top. So now we're gonna be, be about reducing stitches to create that rounded look of the traditional look of mittens. So let's begin. We're going to chain two. It doesn't count as anything and one half double crochet in each of the next three. So coming back into the same, same one below. So this is gonna be one, two and three and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the next two together to do a two together half double crochet. So wrap the hook and into the stitch pull through, leave this on the hook. Wrap this hook again going into the very next one, pull through and leave it on. You should have five loops on your hook, pull through all five. So the repeat pattern going all the way around with this one is that the next three are going to be by themselves. So one, two and three and then the next two are together. So wrap the hook and in, pull through, hold it, wrap the hook and going into the next one, pull through, hold it, five loops again, pull through all five and begin again. So the next three are by themselves. So please uh, do that same repeat pattern going all the way around. When you get all the way back around if you're counting right the final two stitches will be two together. So there will be half double crochets two together and I'm right because I have been uh, just keeping an eye on my counts and just join it to the top of the beginning half double crochet. So that is round number one of the shaping of the top. Let's uh, begin and we only have one more round to do uh, for the uh, for this size because you see in the next part of the instructions that it's now finished uh, when we go to do that and then we're gonna move on to the thumb. So for this size we're going to chain two and it says to do one half double crochet into the next two. So coming into the same one. So one and two 
and then the next two are together. So just going into the next one just like I already showed you before. So put those together and then again the next two are by themselves. So one and two and then the next two are together. Please do that all the way around. So if you're done your math right the last two are gonna be two together and then this is it for this size of mitten for the top area and you're just going to join it to the top here. So what you wanna do is that you want to finish off the top now nicely and what you're gonna do is now that I've joined it is that you're gonna create an extra long strand here and you're going to get a darning needle like this. So just pull this up just like this. Okay and now you're gonna have a hole at the top of your mitten. So just grab a darning needle and feed that yarn onto a darning needle. And what you're gonna do is that you're gonna go in the top. So just following the top around just going into the stitches. Okay so just going in and I like to pull at the end. So I'm just going into each one of the stitches that are left. I'm kind of like doing a whip stitch idea and what I'm gonna do at the end is that I'm gonna give it a tug and it's gonna pull this all into a, a nice rounded off edge at the top. Okay and I'm gonna come right into the end and I'm gonna go into the, the one that I started with just to get it extra secure and now that I have that done I'm just gonna pull on it and it's gonna pull everything nice and tight at the top. So now that I pulled on it what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go across the stitches and if there's a little hole then you can just seal it up here just going by across and just jumping over it like a whip stitch. Just right into the top like that. So what you're gonna just do then is that you're gonna fasten off. Now because this is a child size mitt um, you know kids are active so and by the time they hit four years of age they'll probably be throwing snowballs by now. Um, not that you want them to but they will. So you're just gonna glide your hook in or so your needle in three times. So just going into your work. Okay so just going across by one. Going into a different path but in the other direction for two like this. And then finally going into the final direction the other direction and different path for three. The mitt can never stretch in three different ways at the same time so this will never fall out and therefore you can cut that strand out and therefore it will not be a problem. So while we're here at this stage what you can just do is that you can go back if you have the straggler that you had right in the inside right here when we started. Remember we forgot that. So what you can just do is because that was uh, fixed with a slip knot you just gotta hide it in. So the kids hands will catch on this on the inside. So all you're just gonna just do is just drag it through some stitch work that stays on the inside so don't let it pop out that other side. So just dragging it in and therefore it'll be out of the way as well. Okay so let's uh, move on in this tutorial and let's move on to the thumb. That's the only thing that's left on here so you can see a thumbless mitt at this particular point. Let's get this done and then we'll show you what to do from this point. So let's begin to finish the mitts. So I want you to create a slip knot first and I want you to turn the mitt upside down so you're looking at the top this way. And I want you to look down and this is where the, that stitch marker is. Do you remember that when we did this, this was in the second one. So what we're gonna do here is that we're going to uh, fix it to that same spot. So once you get that in there you can pull it out. So that's where we're gonna start. So we're just gonna go in right at that spot. You can take this out and you're going to affix it with a slip stitch. So just pull it through to fasten on and chain two doesn't count as anything. And I want you to put another half double crochet into that same spot. So this is one and into the next chain that was there is that you're gonna put a half double crochet just like this. So now what you're gonna do is that you're just gonna follow this and you can see the stitch work. I'm just gonna tuck that out of the way. So you can see the stitch work going all the way around on this particular idea. So right, right now we only have six stitches left. So just coming in around. So just count those out. So one and then two and three. Okay so you're halfway around and you have four 
we have five and we have six. Just like that and we're just going to join it to the top. So with the two that you had put into the chain and the six that you had that you just put around that gives you a total count of eight. Okay? So that's what it says here. So we're gonna have one more round of this. So we're, let's uh, begin this again. So we're gonna chain up two and we're just going to do a, a half double crochet in each. There's a total of eight. So there's one. So just count it. Make sure you got it right. So two and three, four. We're halfway around. This is five and six, seven and eight. And we're going to join that with a slip stitch to the beginning of the top one here. Okay, and so it says that you want to um, continue the last round to it becomes an inch and a half. So just taking your tape measure and look, it's almost there. Okay, it's actually right there. So what you wanna do is you wanna do one more round of this and then we're gonna do a final uh, round. So let's do one more round. So chain two and then coming in. I'm gonna go into that same one first. Remember there's eight all the way around. So you're gonna, I'm gonna count these. So one and then two and three and four and five six seven and eight and I wanna join it to the top of the first one right there. Okay, so that's it. So I already know, I already took a measurement. So then the final round that we're gonna do is that we're gonna chain up two, doesn't count as anything, it's just a builder. So one and two and we're going to put in uh, half double crochets two together all the way around. So this first one plus then the next one is gonna be together and there'll be a total of four of these in the end because you only had eight if you remember. So coming to the next two, put those together. And the next two are together. It's gonna get really tight for you because it's gonna get smaller area to work with. But it's not a deal breaker, it's just more inconvenient than anything. And then the final two are gonna be together. So you're gonna be ending up with a little hole at the top and it's gonna be like we're gonna finish the top of the mitt. So just join it to the first of the, the first uh, half double crochet you started with. Okay, so then fasten off. Leaving an extra long tail and again like we had before because there's four stitches actually that are technically left. You want to being able to go into all of those four and then pull those together. So get your darning needle out and just follow it along. There's only four. I would take extra caution with these um, at the end. You know your child's gonna be using this glove. Um, you know what, they're not like us adults where they can be careful with their stuff. They're just, it's not part of their mentality. So you wanna make sure you take your time with this part of the process. So once you get all four in, just pull it nice and tight and then just go up over diagonally across and across like so. And just keep sewing that in. So you can tie a little mini knot that will not fall out just like that and then just keep going a few more times. So once you get that knot in it pretty much will stay there and then just finish it off by going back and forth three times. And now you can safely cut it. 
So this is a cute little mitt. It's actually really a uh, really quite a fun uh, little idea and it's really neat. So this is how you would do the mitts if you were doing the two to four years of age and I think these are really quite fun and uh, if you think the thumb is too long just again anything can be changed. I actually made the thumb sh a little bit shorter in the last one. Um, not by much but just by one round and again it's all how you shape and, and just kind of pull on things. But now you got a lovely pair of little mittens that you can enjoy and give these away as a charity gift or to somebody that you may love. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day.